Hello, my intrepid readers. It's getting close to Christmas. Look at my shirt. It says, all I want for Christmas is, oh, you can't see it, is, oh, can you see that? You. All I want for Christmas is you. Anyway, I just got done working in my son's classroom, my youngest son's classroom, and they're getting ready to do the Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and my son is the Grinch, and so I was going over the parts with all the narrators and all the people that are going to perform starting tomorrow. And there are three casts, and they came up to me in groups of by part, so narrator ones came up and narrator twos and etc etc and then the Grinches finally and I had so much fun it was so much fun I I remember how much fun it was to teach acting like anything that we were doing I'm going no I'm coloring your words putting emotion into your words and then facial expression and I'm making these Grinch faces like it is a great Grinchy trick and they all think I'm crazy they all think I'm totally bonkers, which is part of what makes it fun. So anyway, I don't think I want to go back to teaching, but I do remember, I do remember how fun that is to do acting with kids. So anyway, today's video is supposed to be about last week's blog, which is called The Mystery of um, Heroism. And basically, it came from several several things I've been thinking about in the past week. First of all, I just finished the Kristen Hanna book called The Nightingale. I don't know if you've read it, but it is intense. It takes place during Nazi-occupied France during World War II, which I, is a historical period. Like, I know a lot of things about World War II as far as our involvement and the things that everybody knows. But in terms of Nazi-occupied France, I didn't know anything about that. So that was very interesting historically. But the thing that got me was the two main characters who are sisters. And my friend, it was a book club book, but one of my friends was excited for me to read it because she said it's about two sisters, very different sisters. And they have a very different way of handling the situations in the book. And I have a younger sister, and we are very different. And as I've talked about before, and she just wanted to hear what I felt. But the thing that kind of have got me about this book was both sisters displayed in their own way extraordinary heroism. Like they put their own lives at risk repeatedly throughout and there were fictional characters but they were served as examples of many people that that did that during World War II and then I watched CBS Sunday Morning of course my favorite thing on Sunday morning and the story that I watched at that time was about oh look this Mac can't connect to iCloud there's a little message on the front of my computer right now I don't know if it's blocking anything out, but I don't care. Take it off. I don't care if the message can't connect. Anyway, so CBS Sunday Morning was about Andrew Carnegie and his medal. He has a medal. He's a remarkable guy. You should look into history about him. But anyway, he was like the ultimate in philanthropy. And, you know, he really thought that our place in this citizens as citizens of this society was to do for others which I agree and I think he sounds great and anyway he gives up this medal and he gives away this medal or his now his foundation gives away this medal Carnegie Medal of Heroism and it is for people who do something heroic but even above and beyond kind of the what we would consider everyday heroism in terms of it has to be things that are where the person, the hero, is putting themselves at risk, putting their whole lives on the line, life or death, 
for no reason than because they see someone else who's in, in trauma. And so they don't necessarily know these people or whatever, but they just put themselves out there, life and limb. And that's how you get that award. And so it started me thinking about me and wondering, you know, I'm a writer and I love, I love, they say every person is the hero of their own story. All the, he all the stories that I read have these amazing heroes and people that do these incredible things. And it just started me wondering if I have the capacity, would have the capacity to be a hero for somebody else. And I don't know. And I, there was a story I told, I have a personal story that makes me wonder if I would. And that is, um, so it was 2005, I think. And I had this surgery on my foot for a bunion. It was a very glamorous surgery, bunions. I don't know if you know about bunions, but they're those nasty bumps on the side of your foot that, you know, the bigger they are, the more they cause problems for your feet. And I had a really big one on the right side, and so I had a surgery, which involved them breaking that foot and shaving that bunion, and it was, a, it was nasty. And so at this time, I was in a cam boot, one of those big clunky boots, and then I was going around on one of those scooters where you just put your one leg down and you kind of roll yourself along on that one leg if you don't want to do crutches, which I did not want to do crutches at all. So that's what I was doing. So at this time in 2005, I'm in this camp boat and I'm, I'm teaching full time, but I'm also teaching part time at the local community college. So I have a night class and I'm at the community college and I'm sitting on a stool, kind of like I'm doing right now, in front of the room and we're discussing, don't know, whatever paper we were discussing. And one of my students collapsed, just bam, fell out of his chair um, and seemed to be unconscious. And what did I do? Nothing. I didn't do anything. I froze. I, 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 I think that I watched the people around this student kind of rush to his aid and he had fainted. It was not a you know, it was not a seizure. It was not, it was, I think maybe he was dehydrated. I can't remember the details, but I sat on my stool and I, you know, got the kid with his cell phone over here to call the ambulance and, you know, all of that stuff. But in terms of doing something that I would consider heroic, which is like leaping from the stool and clumping over as fast as I could to this kid who's collapsed and checking his pulse and being very calm and ah uh, did I do any of this stuff no no I didn't and this was a this was a class of non-traditional students which meant most of them were adults I had one student combat veteran from Iraq he was in his 30s and he asked me he said why didn't you go why didn't you go to to help this kid right away and I don't know why. I didn't have an answer. I froze. I assumed that the kids that were jumping to help had it under control as far as me being able to explain to the ambulance driver, what have you. I don't know. I don't know why. I wish I knew. And I like to think, I would like to think and hope that if it was just me, ugh, if it was just me in the situation, and this kid who collapsed, and it's just the two of us, that I would do that, that I would be able, that I would leap off the, <laughs> leap off the stool and clump on over to him and, and take care of him and do anything I could, regardless. I would, I, I hope, but I don't know. And this situation makes me, the way that I acted in this situation, I mean, I, honestly, I am, I'm haunted by it. I'm haunted by the memory of that and like I had I had a situation uh, you know a situation with one of my kids once where he was choking on a, a sucker I think like they've had all these things throughout the course of their young lives they've choked one of them is choked on a hot dog one of them is choked on a grape I think this one was a sucker and this was on me by myself and I fixed it like I pounded his 
hit his back and I held him kind of upside down and I got the stupid thing out of his throat. But it wasn't, I mean, it didn't take me that long and it didn't, it wasn't dire. It wasn't like my kid is turning blue and he's not breathing and I don't know what to do. It was just like, oh crap. Sucker. Stuck. What are we going to do now? And so I don't know what I would do. And, and so that's why, that's what I wrote about. I would like to think that I could be heroic and that I could, um, but maybe not. Maybe I couldn't be. And that, that haunts me. Being in, so in love with literature and literary heroes and people who just in general do amazing things every day for others that they don't have to do. It makes me wonder. And I would like to hear from you. I'd like to know what you think. Um, if everyone is the hero of their own story, do you think you have the capacity to be the hero for somebody else? I don't, I'd like to know what you think. Um, I'm curious. And get in contact with me. Get in contact with me if you want to discuss it because I would love to. I would love to hear your viewpoints. So in the meantime, have a Merry Christmas. I might have one more blog before Christmas, but see, you see my shirt? I'm wearing clothes from now till Christmas, and I want you to have the happiest of holidays, um, and stay mystified.